one person could change someone else's life. You know, so many people that I've come across, just a select few amount of people have changed my life in certain ways. You could do that for someone else. So that's just something that kind of guides me. This is episode 35 of A Duff Said. I'm your host, Duff Tyler. Thank you so much for hitting the play button on your favorite listening device of choice from wherever you listen to podcasts. It is so good to be back on your favorite listening device of choice. We've been gone for a while. That's because they hit the pause button on high school sports here in the state of Michigan because of the pandemic. But high school sports are back here in Michigan. The state finals for football are taking place this weekend at Ford Field in Detroit. And winter sports are coming. But for this week's edition, I will be speaking to Israeli baseball player Zev Moore. Now, Zev was originally born in New Jersey, but when he was 11 years old, his family moved to Israel. Now, despite being on the other side of the globe, Zev continued to pursue his passion for baseball, and he has made quite a name for himself on the diamond overseas. He is currently a member of Israel's under-23 national team, He has also played in six international competitions, and just recently, he was named to the extended roster for Israel's Olympic baseball team. Oh, and by the way, when he's not playing baseball, he's a member of another elite team in Israel. He is currently serving with the Israeli Defense Force. So, obviously, this guy has got a lot on his plate right now. He's been keeping himself rather busy. That's why I was grateful when a couple weeks ago he picked up the phone and made some time for me. My conversation with Zeb Moore starts now. So Zeb, you've had a very busy life. You're currently playing baseball and you're a member of the Israeli Defense Force. So what's it like to juggle both being a soldier and a baseball player? Wow, that's a pretty loaded question, but I'd say they... It, it's really my honor to serve my country. Um, and I'm just really grateful that at the same time, I'm able to continue developing my baseball career and that, and that those two things don't really have to come into conflict. Um, in Israel, actually, we everyone we have required conscription, actually, to the military, everyone uh, after high school. So at age 18, every youth, um, everyone finishing high school essentially is supposed to go into the military and so I I kind of fulfilled that obligation but I have a bit of a unique uh, army service I mean if one of the players that was just picked in the NBA draft in the first round just now Denny Abdiel was doing the same kind of program just for contact just for example um, if you know about him so he was doing the same program and he got released from the military to play in the NBA now. Um, he's playing with the Wizards. So it's the same kind of thing. Um, yeah, uh, so it really, I'd say it's, I have an interesting service, but and it's very unique um, from Israeli standpoint and from the baseball standpoint and my U.S. friends who are in who are playing college baseball and some of them already professional baseball. So I'm not going straight from high school to college, but going straight from high school to almost three years in the military and then going to play college baseball and then hopefully professional baseball. But the, I actually have a number of years now to develop mentally and physically before I kind of take that next step and hopefully play at the next level. So I think I kind of have to embrace this position that I'm put into and just understand that, yeah, it might not be optimal in terms of my baseball career in some ways to have to take this time off and obviously be a little older, but I could also look at the, just look at what the situation that I'm given and kind of look at the advantages and how I could, utilize this time to just develop a lot before I'm actually put in the spotlight of college baseball or just this will give me a good opportunity to continue 
developing while serving my country and while I'm here. In addition, I'll be able to, I'm able to coach youth players and, and give back and kind of try to help grow the game in Israel. So those are things I'm doing while in the military. That is a phenomenal story. And I, w- I certainly want to touch on a lot of what you've been doing with baseball in Israel. But as far as what you're going through right now, what are some of the biggest challenges that you've faced so far? First off, plain and simple. Um, I've been in the Army for a little over a year now. And the entire time it's been kind of consumed with COVID. I know everyone's struggling with that, but that's been like my entire Army service. So it just complicates things in the like the logistical side of the Army. Um, and and it, it canceled a lot of my plans in terms of playing and training overseas. I'm really grateful that I could actually come over here to the U.S. recently and do some really cool training. But it's it's been tough to juggle baseball in the Army um, just because I go, I actually come home with my job every single day, but I have to report to my base before 6 a.m. So if I have a late night game, the night before, um, it could be tough in terms of like how much sleep I get. Um, and the things I definitely have to juggle the things together. If I might have a, I might have a specific, um, obligation to the army that, that could come into conflict with baseball. But usually, usually I'm able to work those things out. Um, yeah, in Israel, we've had lockdowns, actually, through this year with COVID, so that's been really difficult. Like, more lockdowns than most countries. I know from a lot of my friends in the U.S., they had lockdowns earlier this year, maybe in, like, April, May. But we Israel actually is, is, is it instituted their third lockdown. So, um, so there we're not even able to train. Um, and play. So we had we had games canceled, practices. So I actually had to do some training at my house. Um, we built a gym in my house um, to do some weightlifting there more effectively, and had to just kind of be creative for part of this time. But yeah, I'm just I'm, I'm mostly grateful for the position I'm in, and I don't really think about the challenging things, the challenging things given, given to me just because like that, that won't, that won't be helpful in any way. Meaning I, I don't really like looking at the challenges that are given to me just because I prefer to just focus on the positive and what I can be doing at every given moment to make my situation better and focus on my goals, which is, become a bit better baseball player. Um, and that's just my goals. That's just the goal that I'm focused on 24-7. So. When you mentioned that uh, you know you have to be up at 6 a.m. every day, when you're playing those night games and you're playing your position at shortstop, how many times have you kind of looked at the scoreboard and looked at the clock and said, man, I hope I, we get back in time so I can get some sleep? I mean, I think I, I haven't done that, actually. Like, I have to wake up at 5 a.m and be there by six. I mean, but, so those could be, those could be a little tough, but I'm smart. Uh, I try to be smart about it, meaning in terms of like naps that I take and I really value the sleep I can get on other nights. So I, I, I just like kind of enjoy it during the game and, and I don't think I've ever really had that thought go through my head in terms of like, when will the game be over? I, it probably has happened, but, Rarely. I think on the way back, yeah, this is going to be kind of annoying. Um, and maybe I should sleep in the car if I'm able to carpool with someone. Um, but I think that after the game, for sure. I mean, I don't love getting like five hours of sleep. Um, but obviously, but I don't, <laughs> that's not really something that I've experienced, I'd say, <laughs> during the game. It sounds like this is kind of like your escape from reality for a few hours. I mean, everybody says that that's what sports is supposed to do, but when you were in military service, I mean, that's kind of like the strictest regiment that you could be in. So how much of an escape does baseball provide for you? Um, a huge one, for sure. I mean, I just feel like they 
baseball is my natural habitat. When I go to hit at the batting cage just with a coach and maybe one other player, that's my natural habitat. So when before game time, that's my natural habitat. That's what I've been doing since I was a very young kid. That's my passion. So I just I would say that it provides a big escape. It just allows me to express myself on the field and compete, which is just something that I love so much about this game. Um, yeah, so it's just something that I love doing. Like, the part that I'm most thankful about during the service is, yes, I definitely want to make it to the next level, and I'm working as hard as I can to do that, but I just am eight, I'm most grateful that I'm just able to I'm just able to play, you know? That's just what I love doing. I love training. I love playing. Like, this year we didn't have, like, our national, like, um, it's called the Premier League in Israel. Um, it's like an adult wood bat league in Israel that's pretty competitive. So we just, because of the lockdowns, that just got canceled and our spring, summer season got shortened. Um, so I haven't been playing in games nearly as much as I usually would. And our national team things got canceled during the summer, so I really haven't been playing in games like I would want to. But people ask me that a lot, like what you like never play in games. And I, I obviously love playing and competing, but just training in the process, the daily improvement for myself and working hard while understanding that it's not just working hard gets me to optimal results, but that it's really like, a rocky but uphill kind of slope. So uh, there are a lot of ups and downs, but what I'm getting at is that I just love the process and I love the training as well. Just taking ground balls, um, hitting in the batting cage. Um, it's just something that I love doing. So I'm just so thankful that that's my reality. Uh, yeah. So how long has it been since you actually played a game? Well, uh, it's probably been since July or June, so roughly half a year. Um, I've tried to stay in shape as much as possible. So the thing that the thing that you miss out mostly on is like seeing pitchers and hitting against them. So I've been hitting as much as possible against live pitchers throwing to me in practices and you know pitching machines that kind of simulate pitchers or make it even harder for you. So in terms of that, um, it's been hard. That it's been like half a year already. But I'm happy that we'll probably be having a season starting up in next month or maybe at a maximum two months. So I'm pretty excited to get going um, back on the field with some games. What's it going to be like when you finally take your position again and you're back on the diamond in your natural habitat, as you called it? Yeah, it's definitely going to be going to be phenomenal like i i frequently just go back to my memory base and think of like just those amazing experiences like running out to my position at shortstop or third with the national teams or just with my team and, and just the environment of games and i really can't wait to get back to that and i'm definitely looking forward to all the small things about the preparation before the games and and just the ground balls um, in between innings and, and every part of it that I just kind of miss. But for now, I'm just trying to pre prepare as much as possible for that season when it comes. And I feel really great right now um, in terms of the progress that I've made in my skill set. So I'm just really ready to kind of portray that and exhibit that skill set on the field when it really matters because that's what it's about at the end of the day just how you perform in the game um, so I'm excited about that in addition to being a top performer at your position and getting a chance to be in the cage and you know field those ground balls you're also a coach and you've also taken on the role of being an umpire for little league players so baseball is clearly your passion I can hear it in your voice when did you first discover that passion so I when I was growing up in the U.S. I can't tell you definitely like what if there was a light bulb moment, but I have an older brother who loved the Yankees back in the day. So it just like naturally came to me to like, like baseball. And then 
I just kind of played around with it. I played football. I played some basketball. And I liked those sports. I always liked running around. I was an athletic kid growing up. But I just loved playing baseball. Um, and I would, I have a few brothers roughly in my eight, in my roughly my age, and we were able to just practice every single day after school very frequently. Once we started getting maybe to eight, ages eight, nine, it would be every day before school and after school for hours. So, yeah, I just discovered it probably when I was five or so. And then I was I was already playing at that age, five or six, in the actual league, and it's, I haven't stopped since. How important was it to have that older brother around to kind of learn the game from and just have that experience of playing with him? Yeah, so that was that was important for me. I I really grew up learning a lot. I I he he watched baseball more than he played. So he was a number of years older than me. Um, and I saw him, I would watch, like, I frequently remember watching, like, some of the World Series games as, like, a seven-year-old, an eight-year-old with the, with the Yankees in the 2009 World Series, and so I, I really learned a lot of fundamentals of the game, um, as a young kid from him and, and from watching, um, like, actual MLB baseball games. Um, and then I had like other brothers. I have a twin brother and a younger brother, um, two years younger than me. Who, and they would play. They had a very similar passion, and we would play every single day. So that was just big to learn the game just from watching the best do it, and just by not having any like coaches involved, um, and just learning the game through naturally. I'd say. Just by taking a lot of repetitions and, and just being around the game a lot, I think that's a really effective way of learning of, of learning how to play the game the right way. Because it's it's a sport, so I'd say just being an athlete is important in the game. So when you learn it as a kid without too much involvement or, or criticisms or or mechanical tweaks, as a very young kid, like that obviously should come at some point. Um, I think that really just establishes good athletic base for the game. So I really enjoyed it as a kid. Just like it was kind of carefree and playing in the backyard for hours every day. So that was just kind of my experience. So you grew up around baseball and you've been a player for a number of years. And like you said, your brother was kind of the guy who was more into watching baseball as opposed to playing it. So what was it like when you finally got a chance to play in front of him watching you play baseball in the stands? Hmm. I can't recollect that so closely. I think he's been watching me since I was like five, six. So I won't, I, I'd say I probably like can't remember specifically um, like the one time. I just remember from, I, I don't even remember the first time I actually like got on a field and played. Like I do remember playing t-ball as like a five, six-year-old for sure. I don't remember like that one like moment that people started watching me. I just remember over the years, people watched me play. And I was always obviously very proud for him to watch me. And we still play now. Um, we still have catches and, and talk about the game, but obviously for me, it's a little bit of a different kind of, as opposed to like a hobby, more something that I take as kind of a more, more professional kind of thing. So we connect, we connect with it for sure. So. You guys grew up in New Jersey and I'm curious for myself and the listeners, <laughs> How did it come to be that you served in the Israeli Defense Force? So my parents moved to the U.S. Um, just before I was born. Um, they're originally from the U.S. and then they moved to Israel. And then just some circumstances made them, they had them move over there for a limited amount of time. Meaning the plan was always to come back to Israel. Um, so I just grew up there as a kid but me and my entire family moved back when i was 11. um so i'm an israeli citizen and israeli citizens are required to serve in the military um so i just accepted that duty willingly um and at age 18 i went into the military 
after high school. And I'm just lucky to, that I'm able to do that while pursuing my passion. And that those things don't really come like, like I said, they don't come into conflict with one another, that I'm able to do both during this period. It's not that I'm doing something that's so um, heroic compared to a lot of the people to most of my uh, fellow Israelis. So most Israelis um, after high school do go into the military, um, which is, yeah, it's, but it is very unique to my friends in the U.S. Um, and in Europe that play. It, it's kind of interesting to see some of the reactions when I come over here and meet new players that I'm just um, that I'm playing with, and they, it's just so foreign to them to see, like, someone from Israel, one, um, a foreign athlete, and two, someone who is in the military um, currently. So that's definitely pretty unique to them, but I've always been kind of unique in places that I've gone in terms of my story, um, and I'm just kind of embrace it. As a member of the Israeli Defense Force, you have been given a special designation called Sportai. Now, this is something that very few people in your line of service are given. What exactly is Sportai, and what's it like to have that kind of opportunity? Only like 200 people a year get the Sportai, um, which translates as like outstanding or elite athlete um, status. I'm I'm very I'm very thankful. I mean I I'm the only baseball player in Israel who has this status currently. Uh, there were people before me that got it and a number of few, a number of players are joining me um shortly in this uh, as as sport ties themselves. Um but it 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 wasn't an easy it wasn't an easy status to get. I mean a lot of people apply for it, especially in basketball and soccer and some of the bigger sports, meaning they have only a specific amount of positions based on the size of the sport. And the military is pretty strict with giving out the status, and they just want to make sure that you are truly an athlete that has um, professional aspirations and a chance to achieve those. Um so they, they don't just willingly want to give out this this status to people. Um, they want their soldiers in more in more combat positions, um, positions that are more demanding, I'd say. So it it's it's a pretty difficult process to actually receive this status, but I was I was really excited when I did get it. I was really thankful to the Israel Association of Baseball that kind of helped me through the process and made sure to kind of help me get it. It goes through them and then through the military, so they kind of have to, the Israel, the association has to recommend um, their top athletes um, to, to receive this. So I'm just thankful that everything worked out properly. And yeah, like I said, that. I'm able to do this while in the military because I really don't take it for granted. Some people say I have like this huge burden of, of serving and having to be in the military and uh, with less freedom, I'd say. But for me, I'm like super grateful that this is my option, like as opposed to the alternative where I wouldn't be able to continue my sport. So I'm really just happy about everything, the way it's been turning out so far. And I'm re I'm fulfilling that commitment that I have, um, not just to myself to improve my skills, but also to the military and also to the country to represent my country well and to use this time to actually represent um, Team Israel well, which is something that I'm really, really, I'd say even more passionate about, not just playing baseball, but representing my country and, and playing overseas. What are some of the differences that you quickly noticed when you started playing over on their fields? That's a good question. I've actually been asked that a lot. Um, just like, what are the differences in the game of this? So I came over to Israel as an 11 year old. So I was still really building my base, um, my fundamentals in the game. And I wouldn't say that I like, 
knew the culture of the game in both countries so well. I was still only 11 years old, but I'd say the game is definitely a lot smaller here, um, so you're well noticed um, all the time. So I was actually started playing with the national team already at age 12. So in the first within the first year that I got to Israel, instead of playing just on my local team in the U.S., I went to playing on the national team. I wouldn't say the sport itself is so different, but not not in a bad way, just naturally. Um, some players in the U.S. take for granted what the opportunities that they have, the facilities, um, just because it's a big sport. Like players in Israel don't take anything for granted, meaning it might be, at a given time, it might be difficult to have a field for practice time or it might be difficult to have proper equipment. Um, so that the players that do continue, the players that do continue and play um, the sport seriously, really, really have to put in a lot of effort to make it happen. Meaning, we, I had to travel throughout my, throughout my, <laughs> throughout all the time that I grew up to the main baseball facility for hours. The commute is hours away, and players across the country are doing a similar thing. So the difference is really that I'd say people here that continue to play the game really have a passion for it because they wouldn't they wouldn't continue to play otherwise. I Meaning there's so many obstacles in the way to to playing this game that it wouldn't if if you don't truly love the game and really want to sacrifice a lot for it. It just wouldn't be worth it. Not that players over in the States don't have that kind of passion. I'm just saying it's like something that is you'll see in, in practically every player that decides to continue to play um, competitively. So it's, it's a smaller group, so it is kind of a, a special playing culture. Um, and I'm friends with lots of guys here on the national team who I've been playing with since I've been 12 years old. Um, so there's also a different um, feel with international play. Um, in European baseball, it's a little different. Um, you might not see as many power pitchers or power hitters. Uh, you, it's usually smaller guys, I'd say, in general. Um, the talent level in general um, I'm just speaking pretty generally, isn't as high. Um, so you might, and you might not have as clean guys with mechanics that are as clean just because I see the, I was speaking to some coach recently and he told me about how the floor for a lot of players in the U S is so high, meaning the, every player is going to have some sort of minimum ability um, once you get to some age group, just because of the coaching opportunities that are available largely um, largely everywhere. So, yeah, effectively everywhere you're going to have coaches that really know the game well, and if you continue to play past a certain age, you're going to have some minimum capabilities, whereas overseas, they, a specific player may have not, may not have gotten coaching on sports some specific skill just because the frequency of practices and the level of the coaching may not always be available in the same way. But myself and mostly others in, in Israel baseball are trying to really change that and, and other people in European baseball to kind of get the level up, um, increase to increase the level of coaches and the level of play um, significantly. And I think, we're heading in a really good direction. So I think I'm happy about that. Yeah, that is something that I've read about you. Uh, not only are you representing the country of Israel as a player, but you want to help elevate the sport and teach it to younger kids. You're only a 19-year-old, but you have kind of achieved this ambassador-like status for the country of Israel What's it like to be that kind of role model for these younger players that want to come up and learn the game from you? Yeah, I mean, it's, baseball is tremendously important to me. So I know that it's also really, it's 
it's really important to so many people to have a game of baseball grow in Israel, and I'm one of those for sure. So I say just, I think it's my duty as one of Israel's more more accomplished players, I guess you could say, to kind of think it's just important for me to honor the coaches that came before me um, and everyone who who truly loves this game to to develop to increase the popularity of the sport there. Um, yeah, I mean, many of these players don't have the opportunity to have a lot of role models in the game. Um, they won't have as many top high school, college athletes um, that they can look up to. So I think I can serve as that possibly for some of them and also teach them some fundamentals that and, and things about the game that may not be as readily available to them. So, yeah, it's really important for me to be on the ground and, and helping as a coach and overall to do my part to increase the amount of players and the popularity of the game. In the country. These kids could not have asked for a better person in you to look up to. I mean, here's part of your resume. You've had a chance to represent Israel's under-23 national team, and you're on the extended roster for the Israeli Olympic team. What is it like for you to represent Israel on those giant stages? Like I said, um, I, I really value nothing more um, that I've done than those experiences to kind of represent Israel throughout throughout my life. Like those, that's definitely one of the high that's probably the highlight of my childhood and, and I'm still living that today. Just being able to represent my country and do what I love most overseas. And I'm super thankful to everyone that enabled me to do that over the years, which is mostly my parents and the Israel Association of Baseball. But I I'm definitely um in the working as I get older and, and, and better as a player to, to kind of hopefully get to those top levels. I mean, I don't know if you know, but Israel played in the world baseball classic last um, time around and, and really achieved a, a, a remarkable achievement there um, in the 2017 world baseball classic. Um, and also, they're playing in the Olympics, like you said, this in, in the Tokyo Olympics. So whatever part of that team that can take place, whether that's just on the extended roster or whatever happens, I'm super excited to be a part of that. And hopefully in the future, I'll be able to be on some of the bigger stages in terms of the World Baseball Classic or the Olympics um, that we have in another seven and a half years already. So that's when the next Olympics are supposed to happen with baseball inside of them. So those are definitely like my top goals, but it, I'd say it's like the highlight of my of my life possibly until this point to just be able to represent Israel with some of my best friends um, and be pretty successful there. I mean, my team of just Israelis uh, won the... 18 and under European championship qualifiers last year in Sweden against some pretty, um, some countries that were considered, um, it seems better than ours. Um, it was a, out of the tournament, we were supposed to, we were projected to come in second to last. And we won that tournament actually, um, and really surprised everyone there. So Israel baseball has a lot of young talent and, I'd say, again, it's just been an amazing, amazing experience. I've been blessed to be a part of this, to be a part of representing my country overseas. So that, that's really a special thing to me. What are some of your ultimate goals with the sport of baseball? I mean, my ultimate goal is to be a major league baseball player, to be an ambassador uh, to the Jewish people and and an Israeli, show other Israelis that it's possible to play at the highest levels, to go to play at a really high level college, university, and then to play professional baseball. So I just want to kind of inspire others to 
that they can really do what they believe in. And not in a cliche kind of way, but that from coming from a country with so few players and resources, that truly it's something that's possible. And and there are some players that I kind of want to show that message to, that I really believe that if they work hard at it and don't give up, um, through many of the obstacles that are going to come their way, that they can make it happen. So that is kind of my ultimate goal. Obviously, towards myself, I I want to prove to myself that I can do what what I set my mind to. You know, this is kind of a goal that has lots of small steps in the way, but it's a goal that I've been working towards and thinking about since I've been five or six years old. So towards myself, I want to prove to myself what I can do and how far I can go. So that's just in terms of myself as well as in terms of others, kind of that responsibility that I feel. What is one thing that you hope people take away from listening to this interview and seeing the passion that you have for baseball? What's the one thing people need to know about Zev Moore? I don't think I'm really such a special guy. I mean, honestly, I think what you could take away is just the importance to dedicate yourself to something specific and make not make your life just about that, because I do have other things that are very important to me. Like I mentioned, I'm a religious person, and I do have a social life, um, and I do, and I, and I'm, I enjoy music and hiking and other things. But dedicating yourself to something and just devoting a lot of your time towards one thing could really help you achieve extraordinary, extraordinary results and extraordinary experiences. And I think that's really been something good for me the, the, aside from from just the experiences that I've had sports and baseball has just taught me like what work ethic and a complete dedication to something um, could help you achieve and that's going to help me in life no matter what I do so I honestly don't think that I have some really special thing about me like I know I came in telling you that I'm happy for you to do the interview but I just don't I don't know like what's so special about me in a way, but but I'd say that 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 dedicate yourself to something and and see where you can get to with that because whatever your passion is, um, that's what you're going to be most successful at because you can make something big happen if you are passionate about something and real willing to work past all adversity that you face and and just try to achieve that. And on the way, I think another message of mine is like on the way, make sure to give back to others and 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 like give to others what you may not have had. Meaning, inc- in, meaning improve the situation for others in places that that may not have been as good for you. Meaning, if you had a tough, if you had a tough childhood and were not able to to have access to tutoring or something. Maybe if you can, tutor other people from a similar area. I'm just like throwing an idea out there, but just kind of to convey my message. It's like, I may not have had the best resources all the time um, to improve um, just as growing up. But I think if I can give back and change that reality for any any people um, in a similar situation to mine, um, that will really be improve their lives. Like that could change their lives. You can, one person could change someone else's life. You know, so many people that I've come across, just a select few amount of people have changed my life in certain ways. You could do that for someone else. So that's just something that kind of guides me. So that's the mentality that I bring into my coaching and, and, and where I kind of put my priorities possible and you can't always be coaching and helping um, my main goal right now is obviously to advance myself as a player but when you can or, or depending on your availability it's important to help others so my man that right there is why i wanted you to be on this podcast not only are you serving your country 
but you're following your passions in life. You are going after your number one goal of trying to be a major league baseball player, but you're also somebody who likes to give back and help others. Those are the kind of people I like to have on as guests of this podcast. Those are the kind of people I like to meet in life. Thank you so much for making the time for me this week on A Duff Said. It was a great conversation. Thank you so much for being on the show this week. Thank you. Thank you for talking to me. I really appreciate it. Now, someone else I need to give thanks to for helping this edition of A Duff Said happen is Zev Zant, Dr. Donica Moore. Now, Dr. Donica is a friend of mine through social media, and just recently, she reached out to me and said, you know, you ought to have Zev on your podcast. He would make for a very good interview. And she was right. I mean, who am I to argue with one of the nation's leading voices in women's health? I mean, seriously. Now, Dr. Donica is a published author and a speaker on women's health issues, and she also has her own podcast. So from one podcaster to another, the next time you're on Apple Podcasts, be sure to check out In the Ladies' Room with Dr. Donica. It's the only ladies' room you can enter without waiting in line. So head on over to Apple Podcasts and hit the play button for Dr. Donica. She would greatly appreciate it. Well, that's going to wrap up this edition of A Duff Said. Our next episode will be dropping real soon, so be on the lookout for that. But until then, this is Duff Tyler reminding you that if Duff said it, it must be true because that's what a Duff said.